Hello crafty friends, welcome back to a new video. This is a requested video by some of my subscribers. They asked me, Luise, what is a digital stamp and how can I use that, this? So perhaps you have noticed that I have a new category here in my Etsy shop that's called Digi Stamps and Overlays. And some people ask me, okay, what's going on with this stuff um, that is new and I've never seen it before. And um, they wanted to know what um, they can do with this. So in this video, it's all about digital stamps and overlays and how you can use them. Um, first of all, let me show you some examples um, how this can look like. So um, many of you know this Dragonfly stamp kit. So let's start with this. As you can see in the preview, you um, will get all of those um, dragonfly images. And as you perhaps see, um, they are all black and white or like here in such grayscale. And um, yeah, that has the reason that you can easily print them to coffee dyed or tea dyed paper. As you can see here in this preview, they are all made to um, print them to your additional pages for a junk journal. Of course, you can also use them to print them um, to some ephemera pieces or envelopes or something like that. So, um, yeah, what's the reason why I offer those digital stamps? So, um, perhaps you would like to have... Um, a junk journal kit with dragonflies, of course. <laughs> you will find uh, such a thing here in my shop. And um, yeah, you have all those pages here and you make your junk journal with them and you think, okay, some coffee dyed papers, some tea dyed papers or some other papers would fit um, to those pages that you get with the kit. But you don't know exactly what can I make with these pages? What can I add to those pages? And of course, you would like to have something that will fit um, to those embellishments and to the, the rest of the pages. Or you think, okay, I would uh, use those little things here, as you can see here, this little, um, yeah, like tickets or something like that, but I don't want to glue them to my page without any background. And perhaps you think, okay, my tea dye paper, it's nice, but um, you would like to have something in the background uh, where you later can um, put these little things here on. So um, that's nearly the same thing as when you would do this with a physical stamp. So when you have a dragonfly stamp, for example, um, I'm sure you would like to use it in your journal and you would stamp to your additional pages that you add to your journal. And a digital stamp is nothing else than a physical stamp. But of course, you need some um, computer software to use um, all those uh, stamp kits like I have here. And I would like to show you a very easy way um, how you can manage this, even if you don't know until now um, how this works and even if you haven't done it before. So you can use digital stamps in nearly every um, computer program or if you have an iPad or, or something like that, in nearly every um, app that can manage with um, photos and that can manage with PNG files. So that's the first point that you have to um, know about this. All those images are so-called PNG files. That means that you get separately saved files. So on this paper sheet here, for example, you can see six flowers. So you will get those six flowers in separately saved files. So this kit includes 12 flowers, I think. So you will get 12 files. And the special thing about these files is, <clears throat> as you can see in this preview, that the background of these files is transparent. So when you know um, a computer software or something like that, you know that these little squares here mean that the background is transparent. So 
when you print this out, this white here will not appear on your paper. It will only appear the image that you can see here. And um, let me show you this on a colored one. Um, the special thing about my digital stamps is the, is the following. So um, as you perhaps see here in this area of this flower, the leaves of the flower are a little bit transparent too. So you can see those little squares here that are shining through the flower. When you print this out, the squares will not appear on your paper, of course. That's only the background that comes through this um, image here. And um, the effect that this has on a coffee dyed or tea dyed paper is that um, some of the paper will show through the image. As you can see, see here at this flower, for example, you can see the coffee dyed paper that comes through the flower. Also here on these uh, yeah, nearly white or very light areas or here, you can see that um, this paper in the background comes through that. So your printer wouldn't print any ink here to those areas. That means that the background uh, will be visible at this um, specific um, parts of the image. And the effect is that you have the feeling that the flower or any other image will merge with your paper. When you have a physical stamp and, um, for example, you use brown color on a dark coffee dyed paper, then it seems that um, your stamp, your physical um, stamp that you have on your paper, merges with the paper. So it looks not like it is glued on top, like a sticker, for example, with a very clear frame, but it is one with the page. And that was my intention um, of this whole category of my shop, to make all those um, digital stamps that they can merge with the paper. Um, the colored images have a Mm, yeah, a stronger effect like this because they have color and they are, um, yeah, fitting to the coffee dyed or tea dyed paper very well and they have not such a big contrast like, for example, the black and white and grayscale images. But also with the grayscale images, um, it will have this effect that is merged with the paper. Um, in every description of my item, you will find the exact size of each image. So, um, yeah, when you read the description, it's, it's a little bit different. Um, uh, each item is a little bit different because of my technical skills. But for example, here um, at this dog stamp kit, you will find when you click to the last image of this preview things, you will find the pixels, how big this files uh, come to you when you purchase them in my shop. And that's, um, yeah, a very important information when you, um, for example, would like to use them for digital design. So perhaps there are some digital designers that uh, would like to use my stamps in their um, junk journal kits, for example. Then you will find those informations that you um, know what you get. I will tell you later in detail why, why this is an important information, um, why you have to know how big this stamp comes out later. So um, let's go back to the page here that I have created and let's just blend out those two things. So I have um, chosen this computer program that's called GIMP. It's something like Photoshop, but it's a free software that you can download. So when you search uh, with Google um, and you, uh, yeah, you write GIMP, then you will find the software for free download and you can um, easily use those stamps with this software. Of course, you can also use Microsoft Word, then it, it um, will appear uh, a similar page like you can see here. And 
Um, when you use Microsoft Word, you can ignore the following what I'm talking about because in Microsoft Word, your paper has the correct size. Your printer knows when you open a new document that this is the size that you see on your screen that will be printed out later. So when you see the proportions of your image on the page, you will know that is um, the correct size that I have in my, uh, on my paper later when I print it out. When you use Photoshop or GIMP or something, uh, some other um, photo editing software, then you have to make sure that your pixels of the page are the right size. This, what you can see here, is a US letter size. Uh, paper and for that you need 3300 by 2550 pixels and 300 dpi um, resolution that you um, get the images um, in the proportion that you can see here on your screen and in a really high quality uh, printout. So make sure that when you use such a software that you have the right um, settings when you open a new document. I have saved some of my digital stamps here in a separate folder. You can do that um, also, or you can save them in your download ordner or where you um, download ordner. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm, mi I'm mixing German and English, sorry. In your download folder, um, you can save them, of course, where you want them. And then you um, just open your folder and you select one image that you would like to have here. For example, let's choose this dog here. As you can see, it will become blue here or in some other um, cases it may, might be gray or something like that. But I think you know what happens when you select a file. And then you can easily drag and drop it here to your page. And with your selecting tool of the um, program, in this case with GIMP, it's this little cross here. You can um, pick the picture and you can move it to the a place of your paper where you would like to have it. So let's say we will put him here on the left side of the page and let's just put another image here just um, to talk about some uh, things about the dimension of those images. As you can see when I um, take this dog and put it here into my um, uh, paper then it is much smaller than the flower that you can see here. That has the following reason. Uh, when I create those stems, I am using, um, of course, images from different sources and um, they are offered in different sizes. So the original image from where I got those flowers, for example, they were much bigger, bigger and in better um, quality than those dogs. And I have to make sure that you have a good quality printout so the um, images are not all the same size. And now we are talking about a very, very important thing uh, that has to do with the size uh, as well. Because you may think, okay, this flower here, that's much too big for me. Then you can take your resize tool. I have a little problem today with my computer. I don't know what's going on here. I think it's the tenth time that I, I know it works, that I record this video. Sometimes uh, this um, selection of the tool doesn't work, but now I think it works. So you can um, take this resize tool and you can make your flower smaller. Um, if you think, okay, that's uh, much too big for me, you can make it smaller. That's no problem. And it's no problem for the result of your of your thing. So sorry, I have to make it like this because I think I can't, yes, yes, now it works. Sorry about this little problem here. Uh, when you think, okay, I want to have my dog bigger, please don't do that. So that's a very important thing you can resize your stems when you want to make them smaller, as we did with the flower a few seconds ago. Please don't take the dog and make it bigger because I do it here, for example, that you can see what happens when you make it bigger. 
upsala. When you make it bigger, you can see that um, it's not a really good quality anymore. Because when you make the pixels of this image bigger, they will be not shown such clear as the flower, for example. And um, that's not a good idea um, to make this such big because the quality of the stamp uh, will get lost. Of course, when you think, okay, um, I will doodle later with a black pen here over the dog and I will make some artwork out of it and I will only use this um, for my outlines or for some guidelines where the eyes, the nose and such things are, of course you can do that. When you print it out like this in this nearly bad quality, then of course later you can um, do uh, some art with it, you can gesso it and, and doodle over it uh, like you want and you can, um, yeah, you can uh, get the quality back. So if the quality for your product product that you want to make is not so important, then you can make it bigger. But when you want to have a really good um, result, then please don't make it bigger. Um, but you can also, of course, make it smaller if you want. That's no problem. When you take this and you make it smaller so that it fits to the page, um, then it's no problem. And then, of course, you can you can take this and put it where you want. Um, and another good thing when you work with GIMP is that you put a guideline to the middle of your page. So um, I think that can be very helpful because when you imagine that this is a double page of your journal later, then the fold of your paper will be here in the middle of the page. And you don't want to be your dog, for example, it's very slow when I'm filming my screen, I don't know why. Um, you don't want your dog like this because, let me just blend that out, um, because when you later fold the page here, then the nose of the dog will not be shown on the left side here of your paper. And that would be not very nice. So, um, yeah that you don't get frustrated. It's helpful to um, put this guideline here and then you can easily attach the dog where you want it. And perhaps when you want it in the middle of this thing here, then you can um, eyeball it and you can see where the middle is. And another cool thing is that you can also combine all those stamps, of course. If you think, okay, I like flowers, I like dogs, I want to combine those both things with each other, then of course you can take this flower, for example, loops, loop, like this, and you can put it together. So now the flower is um, laying above the dog. And yeah, in this GIMP program, you can also change the... Um, the layers. So now you see the flower here is uh, 3 PNG. And when I put it down, then um, the dog will be in front of the, the flower. But as you can see here, let me show you that a little bit bigger. As you can see here, the dog is transparent where, the, where he is white. So you can see that the flower comes through the stamp of the dog. So that would uh, happen when you stamp with the physical stamp too, of course. When your physical stamp has something like this here at the leg of the dog, then um, you will first stamp the flower and when you put the dog over it, you will see the flower leaves here through the dog. And I think that's a very cool effect because it's very artsy and um, yeah. I, I like it very much. Hopefully you like it too. <laughs> I think that looks very cool when it when this is merged. So yeah, that looks a little bit more interesting. Of course, you can say, okay, I hate red flowers. So now we come to the point where I tell you how you can change the colors of the 
stamps so with a physical stamp you would say okay i use my red ink for red flowers i use my blue ink for blue flowers and so on but how can you do this with a digital stamp that's very easy you can um you have to select this um flower here of course here in your layers you can see it is selected and then you can go to your um color settings and your color tool and you can um, choose different things. So um, I like to use this uh, tool here where I can easily take this thing, as you can see, and the color will change. And the color will change to any color that you want. And yeah, perhaps you think, okay, uh, I don't like this green, then take another color. And then you can also make it a little bit darker if you would like to have it darker. Or you can also uh, make it a little bit more gray. I don't know um, how this word here is called in English. It's, um, yeah, the amount of color that is in the whole picture. So when you put it to the right side to 100%, then it's very much color of this chosen color. And when you go back to um, the direction of zero, then you uh, will get less color. So let's leave it like this for a moment. You might think, okay, my page is white when I have it on my screen but my paper later is coffee dyed. How will that look? I don't want that you um, waste your coffee dyed paper and have to print it several times until you have your preferred result. But I have a little trick for you, how you can check this out without printing it and thinking, okay, too dark, too light, I have to do it new. You can, of course, take a scan of your coffee dyed um, paper. For example, this one here. I've scanned this coffee dyed paper. Let me just rotate it a little bit that you can see what I mean. And then, and you can easily see how this will look when it is printed out. Of course, here it's, it's not, uh, not such nice, but you can see um, how this will look like. This is a very light coffee dyed paper and perhaps you have your paper your in reality, so your real paper, your physical paper, next to you when you are working with the stamps on your computer. Then you can choose a digital scan or you can scan, of course, the original page where you want to edit and put this behind your uh, image. Let me just show you if your paper would be a little bit darker. So sometimes we have a uh, much darker coffee dyed paper. Of course, you can try this out too and put this behind your um, image. And you can see that this uh, will make a very big difference. So when your original paper is like uh, this dark paper, then perhaps you have to change the colors <clears throat> of the flower again so that it has um, not such a big contrast like this. You can also um, try to change the, uh, oh, sorry, the temperature of the flower. So when you put it to a higher color temperature, then it would look very, very much better than it was before. So I think this was the thing before. And this is, I think, much cooler and, and it merges um, better into your page. So as you can see here, it can be a good help to have some scans of those coffee dyed papers so that you can um, see how it will come out. But even if you have, oops, sorry, even if you have the light paper, you can see the flower would come out uh, very nice too. Um, perhaps you think, okay, mm, that's nice, but I want to write on this page. Uh, I would like to have the flower a little bit bigger and I want the flower to be in the background of my page. So, 
So let's take it and make it a little bit bigger. And let's take this dog away here for a moment because I think that looks not so nice together. And let's just scale this background here too. So that you can see the whole page and um, yeah, the whole page coffee dyed. Perhaps you think, okay, I would like this um, to use this page as a journaling page. And for that, the colors of the flower are too, uh, too much. They are, yeah, too much ink that comes out of your printer and you want to have it a little bit lighter. Then you have in GIMP and nearly any other program that you can imagine, this thing where you can decide how, um, yeah, how much it will be shown. So uh, it means, uh, I just have to translate that. So in nearly any program, you have the possibility to um, change the opacity of the of the image. So this is 100% opacity, it will be shown totally. But when you change the opacity to, for example, 60% or something like that, then it will print out very light and you can easily um, take a pen and journal over it. That's no problem. And of course you can mix those things when you, for example, think, okay, this will be my, my journaling page, but uh, this flower is not enough for me. Then perhaps you would like to add a dragonfly or something like that. Of course, you can take um, your dragonfly digital stamp and um, add them, uh, add it to this image that you had before. You can take it and put it, for example, here. Or I would like to, yeah, I, I think this would be very nice because you can um, read those, um, yeah, those quotes here that I added here. And then the, uh, this wings of the dragonfly will look very nice with this flower. And yeah, of course, you can put it to any other position where you would like to have it. Um, you can also put it here and you can play around a little bit, of course, um, later with the opacity of the flower. When you think, okay, I would like to have it a little bit um, like this, a little bit more. Or you change your mind and you think, okay, I don't want to journal on this page. It's beautiful. I think I will leave it like this. Then you can make it like, like this. And now you think perhaps, okay, I can't read this here anymore. I want the opacity of the flower like this, that I can see those turquoise colors here, but you can't read this here anymore. Of course you can, but you have to uh, have in mind that you need some skills for that. You can take um, an eraser of your uh, software and then you can easily erase, for example, a part of the flower so that you can um, see later the the quote here and as you can see for example here at the um, wing of the dragonfly it will only erase the parts that are under it so yeah <laughs> perhaps you are uh, no digital designer so every digital designer knows that that it only erases on the layer where you are working but um yeah for you when you don't use uh, such software or you use it the first time now when you have the stems um make sure that uh, that you are that you have this in mind so you can easily erase that and it will only erase the parts here where your quote is when you do it like this and my computer is uh, nearly slow at the moment i don't know why sorry about that uh, I have little trouble here with this thing. Normally this <laughs> eraser would come with my mouse. I don't know why this has happened. Um, yeah, for example, you can do it like this. Or perhaps you have a watercolor uh, journal where you put uh, some own uh, watercolor uh, paintings in it and you want to have this watercolor effect on your flower too. Then of course you can erase some of those um, areas here um, that it looks a little bit more grungy and, and junky. Or you would like to have uh, something here on the edge 
uh, that looks a little bit distressed or something like that or you or you would like to add distressed ink uh, later to you through the whole frame of the page then you can also erase um, the, the the edges of this image you can erase where you want um, yeah let me just show you um, some other things that I have in the shop where you perhaps um, don't know uh, for what you can use it. So I think it's clear, hopefully, uh, with my explanations about those dogs and flowers and those things here. Um, but I also have so-called overlays. So that's a digital stamp too. But um, yeah, in the in the language of the digital designers, we call it overlay because um, this thing here will cover the whole page. So when you have this here um, and you put it to your um, document, and I think I just forgot to put it here. Let me just, uh, one moment. Okay, so here it is. Then you can take it and put it to your page. And as you can see, um, on the first eye, you think, oh my gosh, <laughs> what's, what's that? Because um, this thing is made fitting for US letter paper so that it um, comes to the whole page. And a good idea is to put it to the background so that you don't have um, the dots over your flower or over your dragonfly. And then you also can um, erase the parts that you um, want to have a little bit lighter. So, for example, here you can't read um, this quote here when you have the stamp over it. So you can just erase it. So take the eraser and the right layer and then you can also erase it. Or when you think, okay, behind the flower, I don't want to have those dots then take the eraser and erase them. You can, um, yeah, you can manipulate these stamps or overlays like you want to have them. And you can, um, yeah, do nearly everything with them. When you think, okay, um, I think those black dots are fitting very well, but they are, uh, their opacity is too high, then you can take this, tool here again and you can make them lighter so that they will print out not so dark as they uh, were before and of course you can also say okay I don't like them in those straight lines then just take this rotation tool and rotate them of course um, yeah because it's US letter size you will have a little bit missing here and here but you can easily um, yeah, manage that by erasing this here at the top so that it looks like uh, it has to be like it is. <laughs> and yeah, that looks yeah not so regular and it's a little bit more interest um, to this page. Yeah, so um, I think so. Let's just uh look low, like it uh, how it looks like uh, how it looks on this uh, darker page i think that's a little bit interesting too because upsala sorry <laughs> i don't know what's going on here it seems a little bit like i am doing this for the first time but believe me i do this every day but i think when I film my screen, something is going wrong with the GIMP program. So this um, issues that I have here would not happen on your software because you are not filming your screen like I am doing now. And normally when I work with this program, um, everything works fine. But at the moment, I don't know what's going on here. So yeah, that's... Um, Another example how it would look like when you uh, choose a darker coffee dyed page. So yeah, it can be helpful, as I said in the beginning, um, to yeah to realize if, is my paper darker or is it lighter and then choose a um, reference background where you can see that. So for my personal preference, those dots are much too much. So I would 
um, not add them to such a page because it's it's uh, yeah too much. But um, yeah, it's your personal preference, of course. If you would like, of course, you can also take some brushes that you have in your program. And perhaps you would like to have those greens here. Then select the green of the flower with your selecting tool. As you can see, the green is now here or this turquoise. Then you can um, choose any brush that you like. For example, those little splashes here. And then you can also splash them here to your page. So um, that can be a very nice effect too. So um, of course, that's not uh, not I I've I've not um, thought about this very uh, intensive now, but um, it's only a demonstration um, for you to have that you can paint over this image, of course. So perhaps you would like to have it like this and you add, would like to ha um, add some of those dots or some strokes or something like that. Then, of course, you can um, also, yeah, do it like this and put some of those here. And another cool thing is also um, that you will find in my shop here. Let, just let me show you. I have those um, doily brush strokes. So I made some brush strokes with black acrylic paint and a little trick that I don't want to mention here. <laughs> so that I got those um, doily things here. Um, yeah, and then I scanned them and manipulated them a little bit with my uh, software. And then I got those uh, awesome, I think they are really awesome, those awesome um, strokes here, those brush, brush strokes with these doily things on it. And you also, of course, can add some of them um, as a little highlight or something like that. Um, some more interest to your uh, page that you would like to uh, print. I think I have some of them here. So let's take this too. They are both from the kit. And um, you can also drag and drop them as you have seen. And then you can take them and put them where you want. And um, also in this case, especially with those um, doily brush strokes. So let me just put the dragonfly away here a little bit. Um, those brush strokes work the best on um, a very light and not too patterned paper. So as you can see, the difference when you look only at this brush stroke and I blend in the other coffee dyed paper, as you can see, this is not as clear as it was before. So let's take this one and put it here also and then blend this out. As you can see, this is much clearer when the paper is not so patterned from your coffee dyeing. And especially, as I said, those things here are made to print them on very light paper as yeah a little highlight or something like that. So I think it would also look very nice when you have only um, those things here in the edges of your paper or here at the at the frame here and this can also be a very very pretty background for some collaging for some snippets so for example imagine you would put here a snippet or or something like that or a little cluster or only perhaps a little knot or something like that to your paper then you have a really really cool background and I don't say that because I want to, uh, I would like to sell this, <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, of course I would like to sell them and, and um, I would love if uh, people would like them as I like them. But um, I came to the idea to make those digital stamps because I had this problem that I don't have physical stamps um, by my own. I, I own a few, very, very few physical stamps, like those rubber stamps and silicone stamps. And um, yeah, I thought, okay, I don't want the same stamps in nearly every of my journals. And I want to have the possibility um, to change the color um, without having uh, too much ink. So I don't want to buy a special ink 
I don't want to buy um, 10 ink pads only because I, I want to have my stamp in another color. So as you can see with a digital stamp, it's very easy. You don't have a mess on your table to change the color of it. Of course, you need some skills um, yeah, with those computer programs, the software, but it's very, very easy. When you play around with it, I think um, within a, a few hours, you can do this very easily. And this was the point why I created those stamps. I wanted to have more possibilities than you have with physical stamps. And um, of course, uh, you don't need so much space in your craft room to save them because they are saved on your computer or on your iPad or something like that. And you don't need space in your craft room. You don't have to clean them after that. So when I think, okay, I have my green ink here on my physical stamp, I have to clean it very good so that I don't have green ink um, on my stamp when I stamp the next time and when I want to use another color I have to um, dry it and then I have to attach the, the other color and yeah that's a really really um, I think a little bit um, yeah I don't like this process if that makes sense of course when you are a stamp lover and you would like to have something in your hand then a physical stamp is your thing but when you don't have the money to buy stamps in physical form, then I think those digital stamps are a good thing um, to use. So um, the possibilities to use them are nearly endless and the possibilities to combine them are nearly endless. And yeah, I think I manage it in a very good way. I think I can be a little bit proud of it that um, also these things shine through it here. So I love it to, to combine those things, um, especially with these dogs here, uh, where you can see the color shining through the, the dog. And as I said, the possibilities are nearly endless. And that what I showed you here was only, um, yeah, was only a few examples what you can do with it. And um, another good thing is when you think, okay, I have my physical stamp and I would like to stamp this flower here, for example, that I just uh, attached to the page, then um, you can't resize it. So you, you have to use the size of the stamp that you um, have in your hand. So you can't say, okay, I would like to have it bigger. Of course, you can stamp it and make a copy and then copy this copy to your other paper, but that's <laughs> a very difficult thing. And um, yeah, that uh, will, of course, let the quality be not so good. Um, but here you can resize it. And even if you um, so stamped it here, it is not here. So when you think, okay, that looks shitty, I don't like that, you can take it and put it where you want it. And um, that's not possible with a physical stamp. When you stamp this uh, physical stamp to a paper, then it is there for all time and you can't remove it. Of course, you can glue something over it or something like that. But um, yeah, it will stay there forever and you can't remove it. With a digital stamp, you can say, okay, I can resize it and I can remove it. Um, when I don't like it and I see this, when I have it done, then I can easily remove it and I can easily change all the settings everything before I print this page out and I think it's worth it to to um yeah perhaps watch some YouTube tutorials like this or some other tutorials that are um, uh, special made for your software that you use you will find tons of YouTube tutorials, uh, when you are not f familiar with those um, settings here, then I think it's worth it to, um, yeah, to watch that and to try it out because it's very, very funny and, and yeah, it's, lo it's, it's lots of fun to do that. And um, of course, there are endless possibilities. So this was only a little example. <sighs> okay, so... I don't know <laughs> what to talk about um, because the possibilities, as I said, are really, really endless. And 
there is so many uh, there are so many things that I could show you but um I think I don't want to um overload you with information so I will stop this video here now and hopefully that makes uh, had makes sense what I told about uh, talked about here um my head is like a little fire at the moment because um of the troubles with this computer program but hopefully I will manage it to edit this video so that it makes sense um yeah so i hope that your questions that you asked me are answered with this video i thank you very very much for watching and please go to my shop and check these stamps out perhaps you will find something that you like and i would be very very happy to see this on your journal pages in the future and of course i would love to see those digital stamps in some um, journal kits that some digital designers perhaps would like to do so thanks so much for watching. I, I hope you enjoyed and we will see you the next time. So bye bye.